So Nintendo made something that's pretty interesting, and it's called Nintendo Labo. Yeah, L-A-B-O. Now, that's not the interesting part about it. The interesting part about it is essentially that it's a do-it-yourself, buildable, cardboard accessory maker. And I, I, I use the term maker very carefully in the fact that there are only certain ones that you can make. They are currently pre allowing you to pre-order uh, a variety kit and a robot kit. Now the robot kit costs about 80 bucks in the US. And what that does is that you essentially put some stuff on your feet, put some stuff on your hands, have them run through a string and go through a backpack, a cardboard backpack that's on your back, of course. And then pretty much you would have the joy controllers somewhere in there so that when you take a step or when you throw a punch, it actually registers on the Nintendo Switch. So yes, this is something that's going to be used with the Nintendo Switch and the Joy-Con controllers for that. And it actually could be the way of the future. That's, that's what I did. I am daring to say. And the fact that do-it-yourself accessories might just be what you really want in the future. I mean, when you really think about it, the cost of buying an accessory that's, you know, custom made, well, not custom made, but that is made by one manufacturer to provide a service. Generally, that can be anywhere from 20 to 30 to 40 bucks for that accessory or controller or something like that. Meanwhile, Nintendo comes along, gives you some cardboard instructions, says, hey, throw your Joy-Con inside this, and now you can have a fishing pole. Now you can have a RC car. Now you could have a 13-key piano. Now you can be a robot. Now you can be a steering wheel. Well, you can use a steering wheel. Now you can also have a gas pedal. Now, there are proprietary softwares for each and every one of these. So your fishing rod is going to have a fishing app. Your robot uh, building kit thing is going to allow you to control a robot on the big screen. And so you can smash stuff and I'm guessing get into fights and stuff like that. Your, well, what else are you going to do with a, a wheel? And a gas pedal other than race uh whether it be a actual race or you just driving along on a moped i don't think it matters the fact is still is the fact that you are using something in the real world that you built probably yourself to control something in the digital world and that's the key element right there not only is it that, but it's also probably going to be a lot cheaper because it's all in cardboard. And while cardboard can get damaged quite easily, and it, I mean, these don't look like the, the high strength industrial like plastic looking cardboard cuts that you probably find in other places. But do you really need that? I mean, for something that's only going to maybe be projected at costing anywhere between five to 20 bucks and you could get probably get an entire kit and there was something in my stream someone in my stream earlier that said you know they're probably going to have templates by the way thank you jb j brucifer for that um for that idea the fact that they might have templates and sell them off separately so even if you did get them destroyed just order a new set I mean, it's not ideal, but here's the thing. When your cardboard gets wet, that means, you know, it was surrounded by liquid. When your controller gets wet, surrounded by liquid, what typically happens? It doesn't work anymore. So, you need to go and buy a new one. One that costs anywhere between 30 to 60 bucks for a new controller. Meanwhile, controller over there mr cardboard is five to ten bucks doesn't seem like that far of a trade-off to me 
Not only that, I could break it down, probably store it flat. So that does raise the risk of star um, silverfish. But that's another topic. But I'm pretty sure they Nintendo's got, you know, they've thought about. Surely. 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 Don't call me Shirley. Sorry. Airplane. This. Yeah. But, you know, when you really think about it, if Nintendo can become its own accessory maker and actually start to control the business that way, that might be interesting. We might be getting games like Super Smash Brothers with us being able to control and jump around and actually be our character. Uh, Mario Kart with us actually driving. Zelda with us, uh, Zelda with us actually swinging a sword or shooting arrows with a bow. These are only ideas. And because that's just that, I think it's perfect that Nintendo is actually focusing these more on kids. And it seems that their target audience is between the age of 6 and 12. Where creativity is still vibrant within kids. Though, you know, I would have gone a little bit younger. But when you really think about the whole cardboard element of, of it, it kind of makes sense that they don't want a whole bunch of kids coming that can probably destroy stuff. And, you know, they do have something for certain parents who live in specified areas. That if you do have kids between the ages of 6 and 12, you can actually go to one of their lab events and actually have a hands-on event before everyone else. And I think it's good that they're doing that because not only are they allowing kids between the ages of 6 and 12 to get the idea of STEM, so that's science, technolo um, science technology, uh, engineering, and mathematics, but it gets them actually doing stuff, creating something of their own. And you never know. This, I mean, granted, this is more along the engineering side of things, but this might actually help inspire some of those kids to become engineers in the future. To create things that help other people. Or take over the world. You know, either one. But... Then what about us who are not quite kids, but we're kids, you know, at heart, at heart. Well, apparently they're still developing for us as well. Um, I'm not so sure how the strings would really, really work with that, considering that they seem, you know, they have a fixed length and they have only kids inside these videos doing these things. But maybe the idea really and truly is for kids to be the first testers to make sure that these things work properly inspire a new generation and then build upon that with something like maybe 3d printing technology or something else that we can build upon for us bigger kids at heart but that's just some, some stuff to think about and until next time don't forget by the way that you know esports rap is coming back next week tuesday on twitch at 6 p.m. Sorry, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And it's partner show as always on Thursdays at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time as well. Feel free to ch check out either of those shows. Check out some of the videos that we've done in the past. This is actually kind of like our season two now. So, yeah. Enjoy. Until next time, I'm Michael Amorgan. That's the way this cookie. Should I say it? Take care, guys.